Hello, Dr. Gomez here. Now that you're getting ready for ERAs, away rotations, and interview season, it's the perfect time to work on your confidence as an applicant. In a nutshell, we build confidence when we progressively focus more on rewards than on risk. When we focus on rewards, we tend to be more active and engaged. But when we focus on risk, we tend to inhibit our purpose, get reactive, and succumb to stress and anxiety. Rewards for a late third and early fourth year medical student may be doing a good job during an away rotation, securing good letters of recommendations, having mentors that are willing to sponsor your efforts, getting a healthy number of interview offers, and ultimately doing well on interviews. There is no better way to approach any of these steps than with increased confidence. And there is no better way to build confidence than with adequate preparation. You've heard it before, luck, happens when preparation meets opportunity. Some opportunity we can create for ourselves, but some just suddenly arrives unannounced, and when it does, we better be prepared. But first, let's get two unwanted but real players out of the way, Mrs. Chance and Mr. Unconscious Bias. These two we cannot control or predict, so we have to play the game to our advantage. Psychology research has proven all kinds of unconscious biases when it comes to choosing candidates. From physical attractiveness to familiarity to seemingly insignificant details such as the time of the day an interview is conducted. I know that we would like everyone to keep biases out of this selection process, and although things are getting better every year, we just cannot control the minds of others. But by recognizing that chance and unconscious bias exists, we can actually prepare for it. For example, we can dress better, stay away from controversial political talks, and keep it safe in social media. Worth repeating for the haters, I guess. I'm not trying to encourage you to live a fake life that is not you. I'm just trying to help you play this game, because no matter what others tell you, it is a game. A game where there are competitors, spectators, and a limited amount of residency spots. Now, back to preparation and luck. Increasing your luck to match is not really like going to Las Vegas and gambling until you hit the jackpot. Quite the contrary. To get lucky on match day, you'll need a good dose of passion, persistence, and placement. So, let's start with placement, which we already talked about it in the last video. Yes, placement is just visibility. Increasing your visibility will get you in the right place at the right time. So now that you're there and opportunities start knocking at your door, will you be prepared? Now let's keep it passionate. You want to become a specialized physician, right? I mean, you really, really want to secure that residency spot after so much work and so many loans. So you need to act accordingly as if you really want it. Passion will help you go through all the hard work needed with ease and with purpose. Passion will translate to enthusiasm, which is contagious and universally light. Passion will have you going the extra mile and doing all the things that make you stand out. Passion will have you focusing more on rewards rather than risk, which will keep your activation and engagement high while maintaining stress and anxiety low. Last but not least is persistence. Even with great passion and hard work, some steps along the way will end up bringing disappointment. Trust me, you didn't get the away rotation you wanted or you weren't offered an interview in your dream residency program. You may have prepared well for a surgical clinical case, spending all night reading just to have the case be canceled the next morning. It will happen, trust me. But you must persist and push through. Success may be just around the corner. Okay, now that we know how to prepare to face chance and unconscious bias, let's look at some actionable recommendations to arrive at game day with top confidence and preparation. First, work on your CV. Go beyond the list and incorporate the things that you've done that have shaped you as a young physician. Dig deep. The CV should define your accomplishment as a student, but if done correctly, will also define your identity and your values. Second, write an essay about your core values and passions as a medical student. Incorporate the essay into a personal statement, then another one, and then even another one. Approach the task from different point of views as mentors and colleagues to review it again and again. 
Third, prepare well for clinical rotations. Know your patients, read the medical record, arrive early, stay late if you have to, prepare, prepare, and then prepare some more. You never know when will be your opportunity to bring added value in the care of the patient. Approach every rotation as if you were a resident. You're here to learn, but also to contribute to patient care. Fourth, learn about the current happiness in your specialty. Information is everywhere, in social media, in websites, and even in the news. You can only join and engage in professional, meaningful conversations with faculty and residents during your rotations and interviews if you actually know what's going on. Fifth, practice interview. There are plenty of mock interview opportunities, both in person and virtual. Practice how you would answer common and difficult questions. Practice improvisation and be ready to expand on anything written in your CV and personal statement. Remember, you'll only find luck if you're prepared when opportunity arrives an opportunity is not only dressed as an interview offer. In fact, opportunities will be showing at your front door way before any program decides to offer you an interview. And you know it's a good time to remind you that optimal confidence and preparation are only possible if you work hard and you are kind. Good luck.